Hello, my name is Eric Putkinen. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to talk about the illusion of gain and loss. It's a, it's a persistent anchor of the ego, the illusory me, to have the thought or worry, what if I lose what I've gained? The illusory me, this, this center, um, is, is often concerned with loss and gain because all loss and gain actually refers to a specific perspective or center. Loss and gain also apply an other for it has to come from somewhere else to here to be a gain and has to go away to be a loss. And these are all illusions of course because uh, whatever you may use to label that which you are, be it Brahman, the self, the unborn. Fundamentally, it cannot become more or less than what it is. For that which you are, there is no gain or loss. And so whenever there is a, a feeling or thought of gain or loss, is fundamentally egoic. Fundamentally, a derivative of the illusion of me. And that idea of gain and loss strengthens and supports the illusion of me. And so it is a interesting thing to, to try to watch for when this thought feeling arises of gain and loss. Now, this gain and loss sometimes will, will manifest as uh, expansion and contraction because a lot of times in the spiritual circles you'll hear of people of having expanded consciousness or expanded being or whatever, but they have a feeling that they gain something. <laughs> I'm expanded. I've gained. And then there's periodic contractions where things kind of go away and return to normal, so to speak. And they go, oh, I contracted. There's this feeling of contraction. I lost. Again, it's, it's, just, it's just a variation of gain and loss. All gain and loss are illusory. It is, it is like, well, it's not like. Gain and loss is merely a game within thought. If you, say, bought a community lottery ticket and the prize was a car and your ticket was drawn and you win a car, there may be a feeling and thought, I've gained a car. And then if it was stolen or wrecked or whatever, then there's a feeling, I've lost a car. But truthfully... The car was never yours in the first place. Nor is a car, the form of a car, permanent. All things are changing and impermanent, transitory. It was inevitable that the car would go away. And it was only because you didn't get to choose when it went away. Because if you sold the car, you wouldn't feel you lost anything. <laughs> but if it was taken away or due to accident, you know, was lost, then there's this feeling of loss. But the, again, the car was never yours. <laughs> it was only in thought that there was an idea of gain and only in thought that there was an idea of loss. But in actuality, as the self is all there ever is, and everything is the self, you're omnipresent, what was gain or lost? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing was gain or lost. It was just the the flow of change. Even if the the car was totally destroyed, it was just a change of form. And maybe the form changed to the point where the function never could no the function of a car could not be fulfilled anymore. Still, 
it's all still there. <laughs> it might be broken pieces and, and things, but it's still there. <laughs> Nothing went away. Um, but it's our thoughts. We create all these thoughts. And, and it mainly comes down to attachment and identification as well. Because, as I had mentioned earlier, gain and loss refers to a me. And so when there's a gain and loss, there's an identification and an attachment. Or attachment and identification, as the case may be. But, you know, when you won the car, you there was an attachment to it. It's now my car. And there might even been some identification with it as that car represents me in some way. It's, um, you know, it, it indicates my status or whatever. And, and so it becomes an extension of identification. And so when the car is destroyed or stolen, um, the, the, the me that was invested is kind of ripped away. <laughs> and you feel less so because it's gone um, due to the identification. If there's attachment, it's there's there's still a, a feeling of loss, not as strong of a feeling of loss of me, but still the attachment is is pulled away. And so, you know, there's there's this whole mental thing of identification and attachment that that is kind of a fundamental piece of gain and loss. And so gain and loss, as I said, it, the, this video is about the illusion of gain and loss. And it's an illusion because gain and loss fundamentally is a game in the mind. Gain and loss is a imaginary concept we have. <laughs> um, and much of the concept is cultural. Because uh, take, for example, the, the Europeans that uh, came over to the New World and colonized. And we would, uh, me being mostly European, I've got a little Native American, but uh, mostly European, I'll say, you know, we put up fences and whatever was in the fence, we said, is ours. Because <laughs> that was the culture of, of Europe. If you could put a flag on it or fence it in, it was yours. <laughs> but for the Native Americans, that concept of owning the land was foreign. They're like, well, no one owns the land. And, you know, and so the game in the mind was different. I mean, other things could be owned. And so there was gain and loss in other ways. Um, but, you know, for the nomadic Indian, for example, you couldn't gain or lose land because the land wasn't yours in the first place. You would transverse it. You would go over it and it would it would help you survive through its resources, but it wasn't yours. And uh, then, you know, some of the more territorial Native Americans that would set up communities and not move, they would say, this is our land. And, you know, there was a little bit of that, but that's more of a, it was much more of a European concept in my mind because, you know, we had castle walls and fiefdoms and, you know, we liked boxing things in saying, this is mine. But it's a game. It's an illusionary game. A game that in the West we fall for a little too much, I think. Um, and it must be recognized or acknowledged at some point that we don't own or possess anything. To a certain extent, this is why it's kind of funny when people say they want to detach or let go of of things or or to to uh, you know otherwise let go of it because it was never yours in the first place. <laughs> For example, uh, um, you know, if somebody's like, "Well, I need to let go of my uh, attachments to my car or whatever, my possessions," well. They were never yours in the first place. There's nothing to let go of, fundamentally. <laughs> it's only the thought that you owned it that is that is the issue. It's the only thought that you possess. But you don't actually possess anything. And so when nothing is possessed, 
nothing is truly yours, what is there to gain or lose? And that's how I'll end this video. If you uh, liked my video, please uh, like it, thumbs up it, whatever, share it. Um, if uh, you have any comments, please post below and I will try to respond. But uh, also I invite you to subscribe to the channel so that way you're you know, notified or kept in a loop when new videos in the future arise. But until next time, thank you much.